going on? Welcome back to In The Shop TV. Today we're getting our gas tank installed in our newly painted frame. The gas tank I decided to go with is from a late 60s Mustang. I believe it's 64 to 68. Paid about 280 bucks, I think, for the whole setup, so not too bad. Any of the tanks that were specifically meant for this vehicle to fit back there were in about the $500 range for just the tank before we even got pump and sender and all that type of stuff. So uh, that kind of adds up a little bit and uh, I'm all about keeping budget-minded. So I went with the Mustang tank. Everyone says it fits but it doesn't. If you look at the bottom of the frame rails in this truck, there's like two little wings that kind of expand out on there. Those have to be clearance in order for the tank to fit. So if you look here at the top frame rail, you can see on the bottom, one starts to kick out right there. So we're gonna have to clearance that bottom piece right there in order to get to the bottom of the tank to fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build like basically a metal bracket and rail system to where um, a bracket basically goes around the entire lip of the tank and then slides inside the C-channels on that frame rail on the chassis and we bolt it in from the sides and then the tank will be bolted onto the bracket that we built. I originally wanted to put it on top of the frame rails, but based on the measurements of the tank, that's not gonna be able to happen. And I guess it's good to have it protected inside the C channels anyway. So um, what I'm doing right here is I've got some angle iron that's inch and a half, it's cut to length, the exact length of the tank. And I've got it far enough forward just to clear these two holes here. Um, I believe that's where that bed sill goes, the last bed sill that mounts um, under your tailgate. I'm not entirely sure, but I want to leave some room anyway for another cross member back here. So that's where I started from, um, and I got a one inch piece of tube just keeping the space on top of this rail um, from this rail over here, so I have room to slide the tank in. I got it just held in there with the C-clamp, and I'm gonna start drilling out my holes now. All right, so I've got holes drilled on the frame rail here on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and pop some bolts in there. We are using some grade eight hardware for this. All right, so those are all tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and take our C-clamp off now. We can go ahead and pull our spacer out. All right, so with both side rails in, the part I'm looking forward to the least is cutting up our newly painted frame one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these, or clearance these uh, little wings out on the bottom and see if our tank fits on these rails. Okay, so the part of our frame that does clear the tank is an inch and five-eighths. So we're gonna go up here to the wider part and mark inch and five eighths and then draw a straight line to where it's narrow. Just like that. All right, there we go. Nice and evened up. Let's see if the tank fits. All right, that's what we're looking for. So I just put a little bit of painter's tape over the holes because I got a bunch of grinding dust. So if you guys notice, I left just the tiniest gap there, maybe about, oh, a quarter of an inch, something like that. Um, there's gonna be rubber strips that we put down here on the rails. So that's gonna raise the height of this tank, uh, you know, approximately an eighth of an inch. So it'll give us even the tiniest little gap there. Um, I'm thinking that might be fine if I leave it like that, or I kind of had the idea of maybe getting some kind of, you know, automotive weather stripping and sealing that off so that, you know, when you do car washes or it rains and water comes through the bed, and nothing will funnel in there and start rotting behind those rails. Even though they're going to be painted and everything, you know, accumulating water just, it, it wreaks havoc on parts. So it might be kind of a trick idea to get some weather stripping in there. I don't know. We'll see how this uh, turns out and if there's room for it or not. All right, so this is important. If any of you guys are looking to put a Mustang tank in your Tri-5 truck, I think most of the frames are pretty much the same. But if you notice where we clearance that bottom frame rail down here, it's one and I think it was five eighths, but the top frame rail is a bit wider. So that means two things. Number one, if you want to do a top mount or flush mount on top of the frame rails, you're going to have to clearance those as well. And you start to really not have much frame left at all back there. So that's something to think about. Another thing is this is a 16 gallon tank. Now, some people might think that that's inadequate for an LS engine or whatever. I'm not going far with this. This is a cruiser. But if you decide, well, I want the same Mustang tank, they make a 22 gallon version of it. Um, you might run into problems because how they achieve that additional capacity is because the top part of the tank that's pressed on is raised up. So now you're looking at clearancing the top frame rails too if you want to put that larger tank back here. Now I've seen some guys running these tanks and these type of trucks and they seem to fit right in here, no problem. Maybe there's different models that they're using, but this 64 to 68 late 60s Mustang tank will not fit in this 55 second series truck without modifying the frame rails a little bit. There's some important stuff for you guys to know if you're planning on putting one of these tanks in your truck. They're a great value. It's a great budget option, but you are going to have to do a little bit of cutting and fabricating if you want to make it fit. All right, so I've got this cross piece that I cut out there to fit exactly into that piece. 
I got the welding machine out and I'm getting ready to tack that bar in place here. But what I also want to do is tack the nuts on the inside of these brackets because once I slide this in, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a ratchet behind it or a wrench because the fuel tank tanks up almost the entire width of this. So the brackets will have the nuts permanently installed on them so we can just pull it from the outside and not have to worry about putting a wrench on there. All right, so I got this cross piece welded in, just some tacks right there to hold it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, and then I'm going to um, tack in another equal length piece on the other side. Might have a problem getting these out because I think um, when I hit those nuts with the weld, they're like stock nuts, and I think it actually melted some of that nylon insert, so it should be interesting. All right, so I welded in all four corners on both sides. You want, always wanna do the underside too because you know, with just one side, you can move it and just kinda had some flex to it, but once you do the other side, it really stiffens everything up. All right, so I just put the tank up here and um, slip this up um, underneath it and everything fits fine. <sighs> it's a good thing because it's all welded up and I don't have to undo anything. The only thing is um, I don't have to grind these welds down, but since I left myself, you know, minimal clearance here in those rails, um, remember we said we we're going to have about a quarter of an inch clearance between here and the frame rail. I think I will grind these down anyway because we still have to put our rubber liner on here, our isolation rubber for the tank. So. Worth the extra few minutes just to grind these down and play it safe. All right, so I opted to not grind them down fully. They're just about, I don't know, maybe a 16th of an inch profile still sticking up. If it's just one eighth, so I wanted to, you know, not weaken it by grinding it all the way down. And that little bit of profile is not gonna make much of a difference. All right, so I've got the tank back in place over the bracket. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to lift this up and pinch it with vice grips closed. This way I can mark the holes onto the bracket and start drilling out my holes for mounting. On second thought, I think I'm just gonna paint it first. I think it'll make life a little bit easier. Let that marinate overnight, and uh, I'll be back out here in the morning, and we'll finish it up. It'll be probably just one second for you guys, though. All right, so right after I stopped filming last night, I came back in here and decided, you know what? Let me put those rubber strips down while the paint was still tacky, and it just kind of stuck on there, which I'm really glad that I did that, because um, it, it comes in a roll, and um, it, it was kind of flipping up, so I said, you know what? Came in here, rolled it out, stuck it on the kind of tacky wet paint, and it's laid down and stuck down beautifully. So the rubber's down, kind of see it under there and uh, I just set the tank back on it to keep the pressure on it to help it stay put and it held wonderfully so we're ready to go here what I want to do now is I'm just going to kind of clamp this down and start drilling my holes out so we can get some bolts in this and we'll slap it in the truck We are all bolted up and ready to go in. All right, so she's in and tightened up. Yeah, it was definitely a good idea to weld some nuts in the back of that frame. There's, I can't even get my fingertips past that bottom frame rail. It's so tight to the tank. So there's no way you would have been able to tighten those up without uh, with a ratchet. You had to weld nuts in the back of that. I definitely like the low profile on this of this tank. It doesn't hang below the frame very much, which, you know, this truck's going to be lowered, obviously. So that's kind of a big deal for me to not have a tank hanging 
nine or ten inches below the frame so really happy with that all right so giving it a shake i don't feel any rattles or oh, that's just my hand seems pretty solid all right so i'm looking forward to getting our fuel sender put in and the pump and running new lines and bending lines i love doing all that kind of stuff it's uh the more fun part of building hot rods to me um the filler neck i have a couple ideas of how that's going to go um you know you can do right through the bed floor with a cap on it or a little trap door in the bed floor but like i said in another, in another video we might do a lift up bed floor on hinges so i might not go that route you could also just lift up the floor and have a cap right on the tank and fill it that way if you want um you might be the talk of the town at the gas station when your bed floor goes up on them um, actuators automatically so that be, might be kind of cool also another option i'm thinking about too that might be kind of trick but we'll get to that when it's time to start putting the bed floor on and all that. I think I have an idea of what kind of gauges I want to use. So I'm probably gonna get the center that works with those type of gauges, which is really important to make sure that they match up with the ohms and the resistance. I thought it was important to make this video for you guys because I know a lot of people are just like, you know, on the internet, they'll parrot, oh, you can put a Mustang tank in the 55 or 57, 59 Chevy truck, whatever, and it fits just fine. Um, I mean, it's kind of a, a play on words. Yes, it fits, but no, it doesn't fit just fine. There's some modification that has to go on. So just be aware of that, guys, when you're on the internet, some people just kind of talk loose to the tongue. They're not meaning to be malicious or give you the wrong information, but they just don't give you all the information. Um, so I really wanted to put this out in case you guys plan on using this, this tank um, or another Mustang tank. They all pretty much have the same dimensions, I think, from the late 60s, even up in the early 70s. So just double check all that stuff before you order them. Um, make sure you double check the top and bottom sides of your frame rails for the measurements to make sure it fits in there properly. If not, you're gonna end up having to clearance them which is not the end of the world. If you're, you know, don't mind doing a little bit of cutting and, and fabricating, you can make this tank work for you. But for 280 bucks, I think it's a great value. It looks really good in there. It fits perfectly now. Anyway, but um, I'm happy with it, guys. Guys, thanks for being here and watching along. Please hit that like button. It really helps us out. I appreciate you guys all being here with me so far. I'll catch you guys in the next video.